cost of living is a plank in every platform. Each side says it can bring it down. From the Industrial Revolution to Industrial Turmoil, elections have defined the nature of the economy. The average man hasn't got the full election fever yet, but the temperature's rising. From Thatcher to Blair to austerity. What do we want? Tories out! So what does this election say about this country? When Labour wins, the nurse wins, the pensioner wins, the student wins, we all win! About the nature of work, our jobs, our pay, our rights. Always being one or two paychecks away from disaster. Total people's priorities, investing in the NHS, getting more police on the streets, investing in our schools. We can do that. And the future of the economy. This election isn't just about Brexit. It's about much more than that. In fact, it's about an economic shift that could change the destiny of the UK. Downing Street earlier this month, low-paid fast food workers demonstrate. If we don't get it, shut it down. If we don't get it, shut it down. They want higher pay and more rights. The fight back against precarious work and zero hours contracts writ large. But coming alongside a general election, there is an added urgency. I'll invite you into number 11. And Labour's shadow chancellor says he wants to tip the balance from the bosses to the workers from day one. In that first budget, we need to ensure that we, we, we put money into people's pockets and lift people out of poverty and give them standard living. So the £10 an hour, real living wage. We've got emergency reforms of universal credit that we want to bring forward as well to tackle poverty and to start introducing a real safety net. And then we start looking at our inv infrastructure investment plans. Here in his offices, John McDonnell has spent the past few years preparing what he hopes will be a revolution, with ideas so radical he thinks they could change the nature of this country altogether. How do we trigger that investment alongside the, the public investment? But how much of this is just retro socialism? <laughs> On the other side of town, another protest. Support staff demonstrating against their bosses. It's a similar story, low pay, not enough rights or recognition. We're working hard for more money, for live, more, for live better, for have a good life, like everybody think here, like you, like me. But while this might look like 1970s industrial activism, it's not quite the same. If you think back to the defining images of the 20th century in terms of economics, it was all about the relationship between government and industry, the mining, remember the miners' strike of the 1980s? Well, here, in a sense, you have the 21st century analogy. It's not about manufacturing, it's about services, it's about outsourcing, it's about the gig economy, it's about globalisation as a whole, and that is the battleground on which the election is being fought. So while in the 80s everyone recognised the battleground between right and left, these days it's become a grey area, for the Tories too are proposing an increase in the minimum wage, taking it beyond even where Ed Miliband wanted it a few years ago. You should be led by the evidence and uh, look at the recent change in the national living wage when I've announced that, that we're going to get it to £10.50 and we're going to reduce the age years eligible from 21 and above. It's Conservatives doing that, it will help end low pay forever in this country. There's certainly, there's been an evolution and policies that traditionally might have seen very much of the left, whether that's kind of, you know, living wages, whether that's uh, caps on energy prices, they are now at the heart of your manifesto and your policies, which is, it, it's an interesting shift, isn't it? Well, based on evidence, you know, there are new things that we're doing to support the British people, but at the same time, our, our basic approach that is sound public finances, supporting free enterprise, supporting entrepreneurs, none of that has changed. And you contrast that today with Labour, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's, it's black and white. Except it's not, not quite. Ask John McDonnell. You know, those are all marquee Labour Party policies, but they're also now marquee Tory Party policies, aren't they? They've shifted onto your ground, haven't they? Not in any significant way. I think they're tokenistically and 
making the right noises at the moment, but not delivering on any scale. Is and that a victory, so, do you think? Well, it's a victory in the sense that we're sort of hegemonising the debate. The manifestos, a blitz of policy, a splurge of spending promises from Labour. Labour is on your side. And the Lib Dems. We will create a fairer economy so that everyone can live a secure, happy and fulfilling life. And a big surprise. Here's the kicker. We can do all these things without raising our income tax, VAT or national insurance contributions. That's our guarantee. Having talked about big spending, the Tories suddenly retrenched. Were they heading back to the right or are they seeking a different identity? We are a Conservative Party that uh, you know, believes in keeping the economy strong and, and as with Conservative parties in the past, that is uh, very much means having sound money, you know, strong public finances, keeping borrowing and debt under control and also supporting free enterprise. And borrowing more? Well, borrowing within responsible levels uh, and as long as that's going, that extra borrowing is going into economic infrastructure. And that's the key distinction here. All the parties want to borrow more and spend more, but the Tories want to borrow only to invest in things like rail and road projects. Labour want to reshape the nature of the state. Yet, have they both forgotten the very people who might most need them? Every election, the parties devise these catchy monikers about who they want to vote for them. Mondeo man, Workington man, just about managing. The idea is that if they come up with the right policies, these people will flock to them. But maybe this time around, that's not quite right, because there are many hard-pressed, low-income families who are simply so disaffected that they don't have a political home at all. People like Lou. A few years ago, she was homeless. Now, she's working two jobs but still can't afford to rent privately. Instead, she's living in a holiday home. We can't show you where, because she's not supposed to be living there permanently. And having a stable home, you know, if, if, you've, if you've lost that, you know what that feels like. Um, it undermines everything else. She is one of millions of Britons barely keeping their heads above the financial waters. Last week I, I was worrying because I was thinking Christmas is coming, I can't afford Christmas. It erodes who you are as a person, makes you feel inadequate. Um, that's one of the hardest things, as well as the shame. Do you feel that this government, or indeed just kind of politicians in general, recognise that there is a problem, at least now? They of course, absolutely, of course they know. They're, they're not blind to what's going on at all. But while Labour want to ditch universal credit, none of the major parties is planning to reverse all of those austerity-era welfare cuts. Actually, the party which goes furthest in that respect is the Lib Dems, who want to seize on territory neglected by the big two. I think what is notable about this election is all parties are talking about spending more, and that's probably left the electorate quite confused. Well, the Conservatives under Boris Johnson are chasing Labour votes. They're chasing those seats in the Midlands and the North. Basically, you've got a choice of a, of a party that believes in free trade, that believes in markets, the Liberal Democrats, or you've got the Conservative Party who wants to put up trade barriers, who wants to pull us out of markets, and you've got the Labour Party who've gone to the left who believe the state should run everything. Now, that is a unique uh, political backdrop to the economic debate. And I think that shows that Liberal Democrats are the party of business, are the party with the best economic policies. Business, for a long time a key constituency for all the parties, feels more ignored than ever. Frustration, exasperation. I think the relationship between business and politics is, is, is not at its highest point. You know, I think it, it's got an awfully long way to go. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, party politics have been um, you know, right to the fore. So we do need a reset. We need a reset, frankly, in the interest of the country because the economy has slipped into the slow lane. Of course, what business fears most, aside from Brexit, is a return to the 1970s and especially old-school Labour interventionism. But actually, some of what John McDonnell is proposing is rather different, including an experiment in localism that goes back to his days on the Greater London Council. It was about making sure you devolve powers and resources to enable change to take place and investment in public services. And it was about using public procurement at the local and regional level to maximise the, the impact of that and also to maximise the control of it.
To see what that means, consider what they're doing here in Preston, where work is underway to renovate the marketplace in the centre of town. Those diggers are from a local firm. The workers are local workers. And that's not a coincidence, it's the whole point. The council tries to procure work from nearby businesses, which isn't the way it used to be. So it would have been the kind of the big names. Yeah. Taking, you know, taking money and it wouldn't necessarily have stayed in the community. Yeah, it would have been filtered out of the community, but also a lot of the local people who are now working in these jobs, potentially they might have been brought from outside. When Matthew Brown brought in this new model, employment here was lower than the UK average. Now it's higher. PwC recently named it as Britain's most improved city. And the striking thing is you don't just have to be a Labour supporter to want to think a bit more local. This is actually spreading beyond party political realms now, to be honest. So even one or two Conservative councillors see the merit in this. So that's 335 all together, please. No. Anything else for you then? No, thank you. Right, I'll put it for the two. That consensus with the new ideas shared by all the parties, whether it's more localism, the minimum wage or more investment spending, means this election isn't quite as stark as you might have thought. The conventional wisdom says there's never been as big a divide between the major parties as there is at this election. But what if that isn't quite right? Because while it's certainly true Labour has shifted quite a long way to the left, look at the Tories. In economic terms, you've got more spending, more borrowing, more intervention. They've gone in that direction too. You could make the case, actually, there is less choice than there normally is at elections because the entire electoral battleground has shifted to the left. So whoever wins this election, there will be a blitz in spending and a move away from austerity. The main difference is just how big. And the main question is whether it will really bridge the divide between our politicians and the country they serve.